Daniel Jones um, being benched for Tommy DeVito. Um, yeah, um, what took the Giants so long is the real question here. I mean, it's been clear for a little bit now that um, Daniel Jones is not the answer. And I, I do have to come clean. Sorry, the cough again. Uh, I do have to come clean in the fact that I did want the Giants to give Daniel Jones that opportunity entering the season. Um, because for some reason, part of me keeps hanging on to that playoff, that lone playoff win that Daniel Jones had in his career, came in, in, um, in, um, In Brian Dayball's first season as head coach, he won coach of the year, led them to the playoffs. And they went up against the Minnesota Vikings team that was, you know, pretty overrated. I believe they had 13-4 and four record that season, but it was a, it was clear they were an overrated 13-4. and four. And, you know, Daniel Jones won in there, and he, he dog-walked them. I mean, I thought he had a brilliant game, and I didn't know many rookies that had a, you know, not rookie, he wasn't a rookie then, actually, but many uh, first-year NFL stars. You know, first year of playoff quarterbacks that performed better than he did on that day. You know, like playing his first playoff game in his career, what he was able to do, I was highly, highly, highly impressed. Uh, in that wild card round, you know, that uh. They won 31 to 24. They did. Daniel Jones won 24 of 35 for 301 yards and had two touchdowns. He also had 17 carries for 78 yards. He was brilliant in that game. He was absolutely brilliant. He picked apart their zone. Um, he was making key plays on third down. Um, he was carry. He was. He was extending drives with his legs. He was extending plays with his legs. He was a threat and read option, and he played an absolutely brilliant playoff game. And the offense played at an extremely high level. The Giants' offense did, but, but, and there's a but there. But it's gone all wrong since that playoff game. Um, the performance levels, um, the performance levels, not only of him, uh, but um, but that Giants offense since then has gone <coughs> gone horrible. I believe he has a three and fourteen record since then, or something like that. That was the stat I believed. Uh, his record as a starter in the regular season is 22-44-1. And, uh, and yeah, and his, the stats are mediocre. He's played in 17, 70 games. Or, yeah, 70 total games that he's played for the Giants. And he's 64% field goal, uh, uh, not field goal, but uh, uh, completion percentage. 14,582 yards, 70 touchdowns, 40 interceptions, quarterback rating of 84.3. Pretty pedestrian numbers, and, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's just not good enough. He doesn't lead his receivers. He's inaccurate downfield. You know, he'll make a play here and there with his legs, and sometimes, you know, once in a while, he does show the capability that he has that arm, and he can fire in the hole with velocity and all that. And he shows his abilities in certain moments, but more likely than not, in terms of cons he's consistently missing his receivers. Um, I don't even think it's a read the defense issues. I think he does a relatively good job of going through his progressions and, you know, throwing in the right place, throwing the ball at the right place. Yeah, he does turn the ball over sometimes. <laughs> Which will happen, you know, he does have 47 interceptions. Oh, by the way, 70 touchdowns to 47 interceptions is not the worst, worst ratio in the world. Obviously, it could be much better, but it's not the worst. But as I was saying, I don't think it's opportun his problem, his, his, uh, you know, the thing is him, you know, just not being able to read the defense properly and just being out of it at this level. 
it's just the God honest truth that he just he's just not accurate enough, you know, that he misses open guys too much, you know, that he has opportunities that he can lead players and turn it into big plays and they're having to, you know, stop short or almost reach out behind them to just to secure the catch because of how inaccurate the ball it, it the the pass is. You know? And there's many instances of that, and 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 the problem also with Daniel Jones is when things go down early in ball games, um, in terms of you know a sack early or a, a incompletion early or a turnover early, it just gets even worse from there, and it seems like the pressure starts getting to him, and and yeah, obviously the <coughs> the New York media can you know can swallow you up and make it. Difficult. I saw Gino Smith talk about that a little er, er, earlier today. He was on a podcast actually with Sherman talking about the New York. He brought up the New York Jets media and and all that. And it, it, you know that you know the New York media can be difficult. Um, obviously yes, but um, but come on. I, I just I don't understand how a quarterback can play so extremely well in his first career playoff game the way that he did. I don't know how he was able to use that momentum game momentum from getting that victory from getting that from having that performance to turn it into a good run as a starting quarterback for the New York Giants I didn't understand how he wasn't able to do that I'm still I'm kind of shocked um the way he's performed since then I I didn't expect it and and I believe in Brian Dayball I think what he did that rookie year was absolutely excellent and I think he does deserve an opportunity to have another franchise quarterback, yes. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know who makes the decisions, but you have to think that he signed off on giving Daniel Jones that extra year. Maybe there was that quarterback that, you know, that they would have wanted if they were available, yes, um, in the draft. But overall, you know, I have to believe if Brian Dayball didn't believe in Daniel Jones, he would have moved on from Daniel Jones. I'm assuming Brian Debo wanted to give him this one last opportunity, and you know if that's the case, that could be some serious leverage for the Giants ownership group to fire Brian Debo. I don't think it'll happen. I honestly don't think it'll be a wrong decision because of what Brian Debo proved that first season as a head coach. But uh, overall, you know, you know it's a deserved it's a deserved benching, and yeah, he honestly. Uh, he honestly uh, shouldn't touch the field uh, uh, ever again as a, as a starting quarterback for the National Football League. Just he's just not good enough, you know. Maybe he has an opportunity where he can be a bench player for uh, for someone else, a bench a uh, second quarterback, but as a starter for the Giants. Or for any other team in the National Football League, I don't know. But who knows? You know, we know what Geno Smith was able to do. Can Daniel Jones do something like that? Is the talent there to do that? I don't believe it. But you never know. I didn't believe it with Geno Smith as well. Um, I still relatively don't, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we'll probably discuss that in tomorrow's show. But. Uh,